Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to our Unity of Love and Understanding Sunday gathering. And as always, let's just begin with a prayer. So join me. Let's turn within for a moment. Let's feel and sense the divine that's deep within our very being. We don't have to look low here or low there to find God. God is. God is deep within me. God is deep within you. God is deep within everyone. And by knowing that, that is the connection that brings us all together. So it's from there that we bless this gathering. We bless the words that are spoken, the songs that are sung, and the discussions that we have following. Because we know that everything is here to enlighten us, to lift us up, to support us, to guide us on this path of our journey of life. So we don't just bless ourselves and those who follow us. We bless everyone. Because we know that we're all connected together. Thank you, Father. And so it is. Amen. Brother Ed, why don't you lead us in our congregational song? Thank you, Brother Ed. Well, today's uh, reading is from How to Let God Help You by Myrtle Fillmore, the co-founder of Unity. I am not deceived by appearances. You are spirit and you are truth. You love truth for truth's sake. Truth sets you free from pain. Truth opens your ears to hear. Truth makes you willing to do. Well, yeah, I think you might catch the theme for today. The theme for today is truth. And I have to tell you that I was inspired to do this by uh, one of our ministers last week, Reverend Doris Davis, who talked about truth in, in our discussion period. And it really touched me deeply. Because it's, it's a subject that somehow, some way in the past years has become questionable. That truth is no longer truth. That I remember six years ago hearing a statement that someone was talking about things that weren't true and said that, well, those are just alternate truths. There are no such thing as alternate truth. Truth is truth is truth. People can change. Situations can change. Your, your opinion of things, your feelings about things can change. But truth is immutable. Truth is truth. Now, that's not something that we see happening in our country right now. Because as Merton says, that when you experience and feel truth, when you, when you embrace truth, you open your ears to hear. And you, it also propels you to do. And what's happening right now is people are not listening to one another. They're standing firm in their own belief, and they don't believe that there's any, any connection between 
individuals on either side of the fence. And, and that could be, that couldn't be further from the truth. Let's go back to the beginning. In the truth, God. One power, one presence, one life. Every traditional religion believes that. Even indigenous cultures who believe in spirits and different things and, 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 uh, and places, it's not that they're thinking that there is more than one of it. It's that all of those are individual expressions of it. Just like you and I, we're all individual expressions of the one. The energy that created this universe, that continues to expand and create this universe, is deep within each and every one of us. It's that energy that we call love. And that love, when we utilize that love, when we allow that love to be utilized in our ears so we can hear with love, that we can use it in our mouth to speak with love, then we can do things. We're no longer immobile. We're no longer at a standoff, which is where we are right now, not just in this country, but around the world in so many cases, at a standoff. People are not hearing one another. They're, they're not communicating. Because communication is a two-way thing. It's not a monologue. It's a dialogue. I say something, you hear me. You may not agree with me. And that's your right not to agree. But you hear me. And when I speak, you do the same. You hear me. Again, you may not agree. But you don't put up a barrier and not hear me. And I don't put up a barrier and not hear you. Back to truth. As I said, the truth is that there's one power, one presence, one life. And that power, presence, and life resides within us all. It is the connecting bond between every individual. God doesn't see race, color, and belief. God only sees itself expressed uniquely as you, me, and everyone else in this universe. We, as spiritual beings having this human experience, need to see as God sees. When we do, our life is relieved of pain because we're, we're living from truth. We're living a life of peace and love. And again, traditional religions all believe again in the same thing. They all tell us to love God. But loving God is not an etheric thing. It's not sitting there praying and telling God how much you love it. Loving God is something that's very physical. It's doing it every day. It's loving all of God's creations. The flora, the fauna, the winds, the air, the land, and the sea. we kind of lost that because greed and desire to, to gimme, gimme, gimme has circumvented our belief in loving God. We felt that we could destroy everything. We could take advantage of the water and the air and we've polluted everything. There was a time when you could walk across not just this country, but any country in the world and drink from every, any spring, and any river, any pond. You can't do that now. You have to carry filtered water with you. Because what we've done is with our manufacturing plants and with our instability of, of our activities, we've polluted everything. One, a dear friend of mine is a pilot 
in a uh, an airlines that goes to uh, Beijing. And he tells me it's how hard it is to fly into Beijing because the the air pollution is so bad they can only land by instrumentation only. It's that bad. They've polluted the sky so badly. When we did that in Los Angeles many years ago. It's a lot better now. But the pollution remains. It's, it's still in the atmosphere. And we're continuing to pollute every day. And we're continuing to hurt this planet. We've lost many, many animals along the way because we've destroyed their environment and they're extinct. We've destroyed crops. Look at what, what's being done to the source of our oxygen is all this plant life that takes in the, the, what we can't take and gives off the oxygen. Takes in carbon dioxide and releases oxygen. Look at the rainforests of Brazil that are being chopped down. For what reason? So that people can farm, so people can... Uh, can put factories there and, and other living things. They're destroying things that are actually making us healthy. Love God. Love God. Because by loving God, we're loving everything that God created. And we're taking care of ourselves properly. Indigenous cultures, Native Americans and indigenous cultures around the world always understood this. And they're constantly trying to tell us, raise the flag and say, look at what you're doing to the environment. Look what you're doing to our land and our water and our air. But because corporations are people now, they don't care. All they care about is their profits, how much dividends are their shareholders going to reap, how much they're going to make on their stock. And the second thing that every religion or traditional religion or even indigenous culture believes is that we need to love each other. Jesus told us to love each other as we would want to be loved, as we would love ourselves. The Buddha kept telling us, well, there's only one of us here. When I look at you, I see me. That's why the Buddhists are, are vegetarians. They don't kill anything. They don't, wouldn't even kill a fly because they believe that life is such an eternal loop that even that fly could be an uncle who's made a new transition into another life. Life is sacred. Us seeing it that way, us experiencing it that way, us acting that way. You know, a lot of people say, oh, I do that. They profess to be very religious and they, they, they follow all the laws and the guidelines and so on. And in reality, they don't really live the essence of the law. They live the letter of the law. We're moving past a, a situation right now where we need to take action. We need to take action for the environment in which we live, but for the environment in which our neighbors live. I, I saw a documentary about different places in Africa and around the world in India and India and other places that are such substandard living that people are dying of starvation. People are dying of diseases that we've conquered decades ago. And there's very little that's being done about it. Love your neighbor as you would like to be loved. These are truths. These are absolute truths. There's not something that you can 
judge and say, well, that's a little true, or that's a lot true. True is true is true. They are immutable. Knowing these truths is good, but it's far more important to live them. Ask yourself the question, am I living truth every day? Am I loving God the way I'm supposed to? Am I treating everyone the way I want to be treated? If the answer to that is no, then it's time to reevaluate your life. Truth is not something that's debatable. Truth is something simply to be lived. This is our opportunity. We may not have a lot more opportunities to do this. You know, when we look at how our younger generations right now are so angry at, at all the 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 business people and the people around the world and the, the governments who aren't even acting on climate control, on, on the change that's occurring right before them. And the fact that this planet may still be alive while, while they're alive, but what about for their children and children's children? We may be another Mars by that time where there's nothing habitable here. And we have to embrace each other. You know, there is such an imbalance between haves and have nots right now. There was for many, many years, what was we called the middle class, where people could live and, and enjoy life and live what we called the American dream. If you worked hard and, and you, you know, you, you had an idea and you worked hard, you'd be able to have a wonderful life for yourself and your family. That's not happening anymore. It's not possible because corporations are not paying people enough to survive. People are working two and sometimes three jobs and still not having enough to support their family. That's unheard of. That's greed. To the nth degree, that's greed. And I said, well, what, what can I do about that? Begin to live truth. Begin to elect people who speak truth. Begin to elect people who live truth too. They don't just talk a good game. They actually do what they say they're going to do. And the only way that they're going to do that is by listening to one another. The only way they're going to do that is truly an open communication that may not get everything that they want, but they move in the direction that's for the common good rather than what's the best thing for me and for mine. Greed has just taken over the world. And the greed is in such a small percentage of people these days. We have more billionaires than we've ever had in, 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 in the course of time. And that 1% of people has more than what the bottom 99% of people have. That's imbalance. It's time to change. It's, it's time to look at life from a different perspective. Seeing it as God sees it. Loving the land, loving the, the, everything that God created in it. Respecting it. And respecting each other. Being willing to hear someone even though you don't agree with them. I've mentioned a, a PBS show that I, I absolutely love. It's called Connected, A Search for Unity. This gentleman travels our country and 
meets with people who you probably would never have he heard from. He, he spoke to a Native, a Native American chief. He, he's spoken to people who were in uh, uh, two sides of, of the thing. One person was a Trump supporter, and another person was a leader in the Black Lives Matter movement, and has them sit down and talk to one another and find commonality that's greater than the diversity, the negativity, the division that seems to be there. And in every case so far that I've seen, every case, the people who sat down together walked away with a greater appreciation of the other person. See, the way that we get to change the way we feel about people is to put ourselves in that person's shoes. The Native Americans say you need to walk a mile in someone's moccasins. You need to live that person's life and see from their perspective. It doesn't mean that you're going to agree with everything about them. It just means that you have an appreciation so that your ears can hear before your mouth speaks something. That you truly acknowledge you understand what the person's concerns are. Now there's communication. Now there can be trust. Now truth can be lived. That's why I love this, this statement. I am not deceived by appearances. You are spirit and you are truth. You love truth for truth's sake. Truth sets you free from pain. Truth opens your ears to hear. Truth makes, truth makes you willing to do. God bless Myrtle. She didn't write and she wasn't as famous as her husband Charles. But she was the reason why unity was established to begin with, because she believed. She knew truth and that there was a perfection in her because there was a spirit of God within her. And if she was in contact with that perfection, she could be healed. Because God only knows perfection. And that's exactly what she did. And by doing so, she started an entire movement. Charles is the one who we all quote. Myrtle is the one that I follow. She did what Jesus did. She didn't just speak the truth. She lived it. Now it's time for you to do the same. Let's get still for a moment. So let's turn within and feel that essence of truth. Because it doesn't change. It's a vibration of love that is centered deep within your very being. We call it in your heart center. It could be anywhere in your body. It's in every cell, atom, and function of your body right now. Feel it. Experience it. Live it. Because when you embrace truth, as Myrtle says, there's no pain. Right now, there's pain because people aren't living truth. Truth opens your ears to hear so that you can hear everyone else's feelings. And if they live truth, they can hear you too. And when that opens up, action follows. There becomes a consensus. There becomes a willingness to help each other. That's what we're here for. Our purpose is, is not to get and acquire things. It's, there's nothing wrong with getting and acquiring things as long as the next thing we do is open ourselves to share them. Because that's the full circle. You are here 
to be that conduit for God's good. It moves through you. I've, I've been listening to so many stories about individuals who received so much in good and what they did was simply pass it on to everyone else behind them. I mentioned last week about a story that Dr. Howard Thurman said about a gentleman he met in, in, in Georgia who's planting these small seedling peach trees. And when Dr. Thurman asked him why he was planting such small trees, he would never have the, be able to enjoy the fruits of those trees. He said very frankly that he'd been eating fruit from trees that someone else had planted all his life. And if that was the only reason why I was planting trees, it would be a very sad world. We are all planting trees for each other, for our generations to come. So that means we take care of our planet, the air, the, the water, the total environment. We allow it to stay in balance. And we begin to take care of each other. Jesus said, what you do to the least of mine, you do to me. If you truly say you love God, then you have to love each other. Because how can you love a God you don't see when you don't love the God that you do see? Thank you, Father. And so it is. Amen. Brother Ed, I know you have a song for us today. judgment that holds you high above take only what you need leave behind you only love walk into the mystery waiting to be known find 
that road that leads within Follow that one home Walk the narrow road to this world, son Follow it back down to where you started from Everything is one Walk the narrow road, son Walk the narrow road Walk the narrow road, son Walk the narrow road You got to walk the narrow road, son Walk the narrow road Follow that road Headed into the sun Past the point where the road and the sky become one Suspended in space Like a bridge to a place You recall from a dream But you've never seen Now further up the road Your destination comes into view Appearing like It's reflecting The quiet stillness inside of you brother Ed. Well, this is our conscious sharing time, and uh, I'm going to put up our, our donation information. <clears throat> so, uh, really appreciate your support. Um, we can't do what we do without you, so we, uh, we just say thank you. And there's two ways of donating. One is to go online and do an online secure donation at our website at unityofloveandyou.org or you can mail a check to us at the address listed. So we really appreciate what you do and we appreciate your support with us. So just take your hand and just hold it on your heart for a second and feel that love pumping through your body. We call it blood, but it's everything. It's the life that we live. It's, it's pumping through every cell and atom of our being. And it's from that place that we give. Whatever it is that we give, whether it's a tithe, a gift, or just an offering. We just know that 
that love is imbued in everything that you do. So we just say thank you, Father. And so it is. Amen. I'm going to put up the uh, our prayer protection. And I'd like us all to read this together. It's the reason why it's there. This is by James Dillard Freeman. So together, the light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is. And all is well. Amen. Well, I deeply appreciate everyone being here. And uh, we're going to end this. But before we end, I want to remind you, if you're seeing this on our uh, website and you're seeing uh, the video, there's another whole section of our service. That's where you, the viewer, get an opportunity to share your thoughts and, and ideas that we can learn from one another. So that's our discussion period. And that, that begins, we don't record that because it's very private for us. It's things that we share amongst ourselves so you can feel very open about sharing. So please join us anytime, any Sunday at 10 o'clock on uh, Pacific time. If you'd like to join us for a meditation, be there before 9.50 a.m. Pacific time. And we do a 10 minute meditation and then we start service. So please join us anytime. We, we'd love to have you and we'd love to hear your thoughts about the topic, about insights about life itself. So, so let's close out the service for now with a prayer. So again, let's turn within and touch that inner truth of energy of love. God is. I am, you are, his beloved child. So knowing this, feeling this, living this, and believing it to the very, the very cells of our body, we believe it and we live it. By doing so, we change this world for the better. Because we treat our planet with respect, we treat each other with respect. We love each other as we would like to be loved. Thank you, Father. Thank you for knowing this truth and for living this truth, now and forever. Amen. Thank you, everyone. We. I'm going to turn off the recording and then we're going to start our, uh, our sharing. Blessings. Have a wonderful week.